I want in one, the Scandinavian. It started, it started when... It started oh, I know what you want to ask. Huh? Uh, see, that's what a brilliant chess coach I am. I know what my students want to ask. Watch this. You want to ask me what to do against this. Exactly. Thank you. So, that's what a legend I am. That I don't even see, like, literally I, thousands of kilometers between us and I read your mind. Right. <laughs> So now I, that I enjoyed my moment of glory, uh, here is what I suggest you do. Um, you play here, um, there are two ways to do it. The basic one is that you play d4, yep. and after knight takes d5 you play c4, and after knight b6 you play knight f3. I have a vague feeling, Dominic, that I may have shown you this. I, I'll show you why it rings me a bell and you will confirm it or not. Because here bishop g4 is actually a very bad move. Due to the fact that after c5, knight d5, we have this very unpleasant queen b3 thrust hitting here and here. And actually, after bishop takes f3, we can take on b7 without, uh, yeah, facing some disaster. It's a lot of queen moves in a row, but now there are too many pieces hanging. And I have a feeling, in fact, a memory, that I showed you this. Please tell me if I'm wrong. You might very well have. It's so you don't right. remember it? That that uh, that is the first uh, justification against my theory that I may not have. It's probably my memory, though. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, it, yeah, okay, whatever. And um, yeah, so the best move for them here is uh, g6, and even against that, we play the c5, which, by the way, is a very ugly move in positional terms because it makes a d5 square. Uh, an outpost for the rest of the game, but the idea is that we actually can climb down so hardcore on the d5 square mm. that they really have to play very ugly moves to survive, such as e6. And now <clears throat> they are full of weak dark squares as well. And after something like castles, castles, bishop g5, it's very clear to see that our strategy, uh, strategy uh, has been the one that um, is superior. Okay, so that's it. Now, sometimes what they are trying to do against this d4 thing is to sneak in bishop g4 yep. and still transpose into this version of the Scandinavian. Okay. And against this, the best move, move order is to actually start with knight f3. But I really, really don't want to get into uh, move order tricks here. And only when they play, well, and now they, they actually have to take, because now bishop g4 is nowhere near as good, for a variety of reasons. Um, but yeah, I'm, I think bishop e2 is the main reason, by the way, and after queen takes, it's an inferior version of the same line, because we haven't played d4, so knight c6 and castles is not going to hit it as hard. But I really don't want to get into it, because this is that next level step that we, yeah, will take when we get there. For the time being, suffice to say... That uh, c4, d4, c4, and then knight f3. It's very important to play knight f3 first, because if you put the other knight out, then there is this gambit line with e5, and it's very annoying. Because okay. after takes, takes, king takes, knight c6, quick here, quick castle here, and we are in the world of hurt. So remember okay. to play knight f3 first, and almost against everything, you go c5 next. Okay. This is how I read my students' minds. Hmm. Beauty. All right, now... Um, I did see, Dominic, one thing uh, that I would like to reflect on. Yep. And that was that you lost the game in the Gala Gambit. And then you kept yeah. on trying it uh, against the computer. And I didn't really like the way <laughs> how that went. So the only question that I would like to ask is that did you actually look up the line? Yeah, I did. Did you look up the line before you played the Stockfish games? Yes, I did. You sure? I thought I did. That was the Please was don't it. feel like I'm interrogating you. I'm asking questions. So in the actual game I played knight takes knight. Which is bad oh, because you are supposed to bad. play e6 first. Yeah, exactly. And I looked up e6. Yeah. And I thought I looked deeper into that, but I maybe I didn't. So here in this position they're supposed to take you here. Bishop e2 is more or less a lemon. Stockfish didn't play it, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, that this is uh, not a particularly good move and there are lots of good responses to it. Bishop b7 followed by knight d7 is the most natural course of action here because you want to control these squares. 
So bishop b7 is good because after takes, takes, takes and takes back, you're already on the diagonal, so no disaster can hit you there. You can always put a piece on d5 if need be. And now your rook is guarded, so after a6 the pawn chain is intact and no sacks can happen. Okay. Yeah, this is a very irrelevant move, but it's still not the end of the world. Queen c2 is really poor because it allows knight b4s on occasions. But once again, you need to be aware of the fact that this is hanging. So once again, a good response here is still bishop b7, so that after takes, you can take there. Although now, this might hurt us, actually. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now you, ca you can't do that anymore. Hmm. Stockfish, like, just kills on the tactics. Like, oh, yeah. Made... But that's not Stockfish. That's any computer. So maybe knight d7, like you did. Knight, uh, knight takes, and why don't we take like this? That puzzled me. Yep. Like you just gave away a pawn for no reason. That's it. Game over. Mm. Like why wouldn't you take like uh, the other pawn and then pawn up and push it in his face? I mean, he has got some counterplay because now he has got these uh, four pawns uh, versus uh, these three. But still, you are a healthy pawn up. Yeah, don't just give it away. Yep. Yeah, so that was really bad and this was really bad too. Oh, that's the same game, sorry. Was it? No, it's actually not. So here you played bishop b7, which was another uh, blunder, and you should have played here knight d7. Mm. So that after takes, you can sneak this one in. Yep. And even though technically even here they can take you, but now it's going to be a different story, because although they did equalize materially, this bishop is going to be an absolute killer mm. on that diagonal. With the queen together, golly gosh, that's... Yeah, just game. I was so, just doing a bit of experimenting because I yeah the gambit hasn't come up in my games very often, and I thought I need to practice it. I'm obviously forgetting the lines that I thought I'd memorized, and yeah, I wanted to have just a yeah. And I don't even know how this occurred, so I didn't even want to get into this. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's go on to chess. I don't mind c6 here, Dominic, but given that your opponent's first two moves were these, I already have the feeling that this is uh, another guy out of the billion of uh, amateur players who play the London system because their life is not boring enough and they want to make it even worse. And so against them, it's well worth to play bishop f5 first, wait for this lemon that they keep on doing, and then go for c5 right away. Yeah, faster. Throw. Okay, because whilst what you are doing is logical and sound, once again, I'm already smelling a red that this is another guy, once again, whose life is not boring enough as it is. And uh, you definitely want to spice up those games because uh, their only purpose of life is to make your life boring too. Hence the London yep. system. Yep. Um, and we landed right in it. See, so, yeah. I mean, I, I do like your call on this one because you realize what was going on and you adjusted to it. It's very awkward to lose a tempo like that, but much rather than, you know, playing a silly position for the rest of the game. Um, I loved your play all the way up to here, Dominic. Okay. Um, hmm. What do we have to say about this? It releases tension, but it also gives my rook the open file, so... That's right. Now, my only question is that, given that you castled after it, yeah. that tells me that you didn't benefit from the swap, did you? I don't quite follow that. Because I castled after it, it didn't, I didn't benefit. Yeah, so what's the benefit of swapping? Why well, I'm asking, if the strong follow-up after c takes d4 is castles... Yeah, 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 knight in first, knight b4, yeah. Well, no, I disagree with all of that. I reckon castles okay. first, okay. see what they do, and then you can get fancy with this take business if you want. Okay. Because here, you are not ready for action. Just uh -huh. one move away. And you already chucked this in, and then you castled out of it. Now, if mm. I had played a3, Neither bishop a3 nor knight b4 could have happened. Which were the two main moves of your plan. Perfect moves, by the way. Yep. So the, what, the way how you played the game after that was brilliant. But do yep. you really think that in this position they will play a3? 
because my thinking is I don't think so more importantly are you gonna take on d4 after a3 once no. again eh, I don't think so yep so see now basically playing the same move that you played in the game you force them to play a complete lemon and yep. now you don't even have to actually compromise you can drop back and play for e5 yeah 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 so I did like what you got out of the swap so I definitely and admittedly here you have got colossal play on the c file so yes yep. you did gain a lot out of that swap it was just yep. ill-timed so your advice here is basically f fully develop yourself before you yeah because a, a once again Dominic the way how you did it you can't claim that you gained out of it anything okay mm -hmm. you did because your opponent didn't know how to play chess but had they played a3 here I'm arguing yeah, if it was worth swapping this for this yeah if you let me play b4 and remember they have got the two bishops so yeah it was the right idea not quite at the right moment got it yep okay so from here on we, we are totally in the driving seat so this could have happened in my move order too uh and i think that from here on you played a very convincing game i really liked it mine is probably that move Okay, this is again arguable. I because of I like pressure and tension, I would have much rather preferred rook c3 here. Yes, yes. I know that you wanted to run away with that bishop before it went somewhere that was somewhat intimidating to you. But considering that their only legal move is bishop e2 here for by rook fc8, I think we both agree that your domination here is way overwhelming. I looked at this later on. Oh and man. I'm not, I'm not sure why I didn't see rook. Like to rook see. here, a2 is hanging, rook b2, other rook is incoming. Pfft. Yes. Colossal position. There is no way that I would trade this position for anything. Yeah. Like anything that you can get out of this other than rook c3. Yep. It's an yeah, absolute it's must. Dominating. Yeah. Well, your whole C file, which was the reason in the first place why you went on uh, with this swap, is now just coming to fruition in a beautiful way. So mm -hmm. this is an ultimate triumph of a perfect strategy. Yep. And you're doing the same thing, but you see how much paler it is. It's like, yeah, yep. it's a way inferior version of yep. what we have been doing before. Yep. And they, here there will be another move that I really, really didn't like to see. Um, why are we not taking this, Dominic? I think you, you, you got a bit too busy with trying to be cute here. Every single piece you have is attacking d4. Why don't you yep. take it? I thought that was just one way of releasing tension a little bit too early. No, 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 don't mistake releasing tension for winning material for free. Okay, okay. That's two totally different kettle of fish. This is just you not taking free material. And actually, it's not even the case because I think, um, I mean, yeah, even if I move the queen, let's say random, yep. you will have to take. Hmm. Right, so I don't really understand the the, the big difference here, um, and uh, the other thing, oh yeah, so there was a tactics here too that may have caused some troubles here, right? I'm not sure if it's correct or not. Definitely not in this way. Okay, rook takes. Wait a second. Good. Probably it's not sound, but I would like to check it. You. Yeah. No, I can't attack the c2 bishop now, the b2 bishop now, so this looks uh, legit to me. Right, okay. Um, no, the rest was fine. Um, and well played, so yeah. Overall, this was a good game, Dominic. Thank you. So, there were only very few hiccups in it, and uh, the strategy was perfect. The pieces went to the squares where they belonged. So, that actually was a good performance, unlike this. Okay, uh, this is definitely new territory for you. Knight c4 is the correct move here. The idea is that uh, it's going to be difficult for them to defend this pawn. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. Sort of yeah, it's called the Latvian Gambit. Um, 
Yeah, you played logical moves. The point of holding d4 back is that after knight c4 takes, knight c3, queen he, queen he, knight c's, f6, you have d3 hitting the pawn. Yep. And so they are forced to give up the bishop for it, and you're good to castle here. Hmm. I should learn this. Yep. Well, you just did. That's all you need to know. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so d4, d6. Yeah, so you see the difference now. The d5 is pending. Mm. And in my version, it couldn't have happened. Okay, this way it's also good because uh, he's being very silly. I could have exploited the. Didn't you have g5 here, Dominic? Cough, cough. Yeah. Now this is something that troubles me, how we do not see such moves like this. I think I also had uh, knight d2, didn't I? Yeah, but Dominic, I wouldn't... Like, uh, why would this move even occur to me? Like, this is the probably, not probably, 100% definitely the ugliest way to play the game. And I don't even like it, because after d5, you're still in the same problem. In fact, I don't want to acknowledge the mere existence of this move. Let's pretend that that didn't take place. Okay. Neither you saying that nor me playing it. <laughs> All right. I mean, you're just going forward and you are taking three pawns. Why would I go back? Yuck. Uh, yeah, g5, game over. Uh, this is a huge tactical blunder. Mm. Because now you, uh, number one, you have to be quite cute in order to break it even. And even if you do, Mm. Yeah, your advantage is not going to be going to be as sizable as it could have been. Yep. Didn't he have something like bishop c6 here? Or what if I just take the knight? And the queen takes back. Dead even yeah. position materially. Your position, your king side is very loose. Rook is hanging. Mm. I think it's slightly worse. Okay, I like this part of the end game that you played here. Um, that was good. This is perfect play. I would have taken hip. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm happy with that too. Yeah, I. I know that looks bad. It doesn't look bad, but why wouldn't you play bishop c4? So that after takes you can penetrate. Isn't this again game over? It is. I, I was playing thinking that the game was already over, like from this point it, on. Like if It is over, over, Dominic, but remember the good old wisdom of it ain't over till it's over. It's over. Yeah. So you really have to make it uh, more and more over. So when it is over, yeah. Yeah. then what your job is to make sure that every single move makes it even more so deadly so that they will resign like in this position this is the second best compared to bishop c4 right away yep. okay until now i understood every single move perfectly well this was the first point where i went like mm, okay first of all e5 appears to be very tempting to create a passer yep and thereby ruling out all of these funky shenanigans that he's trying to do here to you. Uh, I am totally lost what this move is meant to do. My, my, my plan there was to play bishop to h7 and then back to f5 and, and swap. And bishop. then what? And then I thought extra pawn. Just you, easy win. you do have your extra pawn already. And uh, I don't see how it's an easier win with the bishop on f5 than the one on b3. I just thought if I can swap them off, then... Yeah, but they won't swap it off, Dominic, would you? Why Why do you assume that they will swap off your bishop? No, I just thought that it would be my bishop's better placed on f5, and, and he, he has to avoid the swap, which puts his bishop in a worse position. Like, it's worse on c6? Yeah, it wasn't... Just... Yeah. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, Dominic, is that you are executing a free move plan, yeah. And all it achieves is to potentially, perhaps, maybe, 
makes this bishop more active than what it is, which is very arguable. But I don't even I don't want to contest that part of your argument. Okay. Yep. So that's not good enough, mm. especially not when you are a pawn up. So you have got a bit of a problem here with these two. Yep. Which, by the way, I was looking at taking, taking, and then king here threatening this. That looks good. Because part of your problem currently is that the position is too congested. Yep. And you can't really get in, if that makes sense. It does, it does. And it very often, a very common phenomenon in endgames is what we call opening a new front, uh, where you can get in and almost exclusively you achieve it by swapping a pair of pawns. You have to be careful with this, because when material up, we don't like to swap material. I mean, yep. by material, I mean pawns. But considering that there are 75 pawns each on the board, one pair of pawns going off, it yep. doesn't make any difference. So you take here and you have a target. And yep. please remember that this is a target too. Yep. Yeah, that's two weaknesses. Should be enough to... Correct. So now I don't even know whether I would play here or King G5 first, but probably it doesn't matter. Yeah, yep. And uh, whatever they do, I'm going to go bishop here next, which almost inevitably is going to force them to go back to c8. So actually, just for argument's sake, I'm going to play bishop d5 because it's more forcing. Yep. Bishop c8, king g5, king f8, king g6, and I'm telling you already, it's going to be a zogzwang. Because the king can't stay on the g7 pawn because it can't go to any of these squares, so it's stuck. Yep. And the bishop yep. is stuck too. Very so nice. when I said that it was gonna be a Zugzwang, it yeah, is yeah. a Zugzwang right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's game over because the bishop moves and GG. Yep. And yes, it is nice. And I can, I could, it's not a Zugzwang for me, like I can just play bishop c6 there. Oh yeah, you have got a million pass moves too. Uh, a yeah. very good strategy, Dominic, is in these endgames, and it took me years and years. To actually apply this, that when you have got an endgame position like this, yep. just literally try to distance yourself from that very intense kind of thinking where you go like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. Just push your chair back a meter from the screen and admire your position for a couple of seconds or even half a minute about, oh yeah, I just killed this guy, I'm a pawn up. Let me see what would be a sensible strategy here. Mm. And you need to come up with something productive. And once again, I do say it a lot to my students. Endgame is for time millionaires, especially when you are a pawn up. You can do whatever you want here. You do not have a weakness to worry about. You don't have a misplaced piece. So you just need to come up with a constructive plan. King f4, beauty, king e7. And once again, you go like, okay, the guy is on the ropes. All I need to do is a knockout. And then you just start to look at, okay, where can I soften him up? Okay, that's weak. Oh, wow, can I just go in and kill him? Well, not quite, because after bishop here, c6 hurts. Yep. Then you cast your on the king side, you go like, what happens if I take, they take, oh, hang on, if it moves away, this motif is going to hurt. Let me do that. They have to run, oh, my, come here. How will they stop me doing that? Game. Oh, cool, okay, let me double check. Take, take. Do they have to take me here? Yeah, they do. Mm. And that's it. Bishop d5 and the game is over. It's also a good idea is to sort of throw up a map in your head. Like, okay, where am I going? What am I targeting? Oh, soft spot there. Okay. Yep. Th that's already in the back of your mind constantly in every move. And this whole entire plan totally disregards the main features of the position, which is that you have a path in... And yep. you have a path in. Yep. Neither of these come into play. Now, after bishop e6 here... Oh, he hasn't played it, has he? Okay. Never mind. G g5 check back. Okay, so this is getting a bit tricky now, because by pushing the pawn up to g5, you took away the g5 square from yourself. Uh, g5 king. No. So what you have to do now, potentially, again, is to play e5 just so that you have this pass pawn scenario, swing the king across here, yep. play c4 and try to create a new weakness. Mm. But actually putting the king on c5 could be very good in combination with regrouping here. 
Once again, you are aiming for a Zugi. Yep. Okay, but you need some freedom for your pieces here because otherwise this whole mess is going to get very congested. And Bishop G8, the cursed move again, and Bishop E6. And I was looking at it for a fair while and uh, I didn't want to believe my eyes, but it may not be actually winnable anymore. Mm. And that hurt me a lot. But let's go one by one because there were a lot of funny things here that I absolutely 100% did not understand. Yep. So uh, we need to clear that. You played E5. Yep. So I'm guessing that um, after D5 you want to play G6. Yeah, I think that would look good. Okay, but I'm still a little bit in the dark with this. Oh, you have got an extra form move to spare here, because I was going to say that uh, you seem to be stuck here, but it's actually me who is getting yeah. stuck. Because yeah. after King E7, King E5, you get in. So the, the one spare form move helps you out there a great deal, but after G6, I'm not sure if we can do much here. I looked at this, and I do have a win here. It's surprising. Um... It's a surprising win. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I don't think that I could reasonably. Oh, it. okay. This is a. Um. I mean, I don't know if this works, but I suppose this is a motive that we can play for. Yes, exactly. But I think you play a3 first of all. I don't think that that's gonna make a difference. My only concern is that if we come back here, the king comes here, which is why, by the way, a3 is necessary so that the king will come this way. Yep. And yep. so after the so drawback. Yep. Yes. Yes, it gives uh, you an extra. Yeah, king d5, c4 takes and king c3 still wins. Yes. But we yes. are walking on very thin ice here, Dominic. Like, it shouldn't yeah. be like this. It shouldn't be so hard, yeah. Yeah, but that I can't, really, can't see any other productive way to win it. So, yeah, that's fair enough. So, here, pawn a3, and then, uh, yeah, that's c4. Yeah, you need to remember this motif because it fairly frequently recurs in pawn endings that uh, this is a zogi. And now I'm guessing, yeah, they are too slow. Yeah. And you win the queen end game. So I had a win right until the end, and I missed so many different chances. Such an annoying game. Yeah, it was indeed. I, I thought that this would upset you a little bit. Um, okay, so this was the opening that we discussed. I really dislike this take, Dominic. Like, this is once again releasing really tension, making the pawn structure symmetrical. It's everything that I teach you not to do. This is the epitome of what not to do. Like, I would much rather see you here play knight a4 with the idea of playing c4 next and dropping back. As ugly mm. as it is, I would have been 10 times happier seeing this move mm. than this. This is just utterly ugly. Like, all your potential advantages out of the window right now. And t4 makes it far worse. Yep. Like, now you are worse. I don't understand why you are playing c4 here. Because there is nothing to be gained, and now you are stuck with an isolated pawn. Is that a pawn? It no. is a very, very poor strategical choice. See, you should have played here bishop f4, queen d2, bring the heavy dudes to the e-file, and go from there, but realistically the position remains totally even. But c4 mm. is way too impulsive here. And uh, b3... Yeah, this is just spelling disaster. I mean, his play, Dominic, here is super duper basic and easy. He wants to put a bishop here, a queen up here, a rook here, and a rook here. Mm, yep. Yeah, against that to play this looks ridiculously counterintuitive. But anyway, the bishop on b2 is the ugliest piece it can get, right? So why wouldn't you put it somewhere decent? Not to mention that uh, you had pawn push. Which puts this pawn actually on a better square than where it is right now. Compromises the knight, creates some threats, bishop back, and go from here. You have to watch out for b-falls on occasions. And now you develop bishop here, queen d2 is going to be a tempo hitting the knight again. Trying mm. to capitalize on what you have. Like b3 is such a submissive and very passive move that you should not play like this. And the okay. punishment came very quickly, like, you are just dead here. Yep. D4 is a corner. Yep. And um, he shouldn't have done it this way, but, uh, yeah, whatever. That was your part of the luck. Now we are out of the woods a little bit. A little bit. Um, this would still hurt you like crazy. Mm. But 
luckily they didn't see it. Uh, why did you take this? Oh, because you're, oh, never mind. Okay, sorry. What was saying? Okay. Yeah. Whoa! You're getting fancy, eh? Well, it doesn't really work, yeah. Well, you had to do something, and you're losing a pawn anyway. Uh, I'm yeah. guessing it was a mouse slip. He mouse slipped, so I offered him a draw. Which he took. You are a gentleman. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't even deserve a draw for that performance. I agree with that, but you deserve it because you are a gentleman. Thank you. Oh, this man, this mate, man, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Speaking of undeserved <laughs> stuff. Yeah, an undeserved mate here as well, yeah. Yeah. Have you discussed, Dominic, uh, the perk defense at all? Uh, I take it as a no. Yeah. Okay. We might have gone over it in one or two games, but I obviously can't remember it. Okay, so basically the idea is that you always develop this knight first before that. And then we play f4, so we play this three pawn attack, which is called the Austrian attack, knight of three, bishop here, and castles. This is the line that I enjoy playing as white. So, can you say the name of the attack again? Austrian attack. Austrian, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but given that your opponent instead played the retarded opening, it doesn't matter. Okay. So now we are good to do whatevs. Uh, I once again. In the perk structures, you tend to not develop this bishop for quite a while because it's not actually clear where it mm. belongs. Whereas a setup like bishop here, queen here, and queenside castles is almost always an efficient way to play against this nonsense. Okay. Or in fact, against any other kinds of nonsense as well. Whereas on bishop on d3, now you blocked your way here, so now knight c6 will already hit this annoyingly. So yeah, all I'm saying is that uh, your priority here is this bishop, not this one, because you don't know where it's actually going to land. Okay. Okay, see how much better it would be if you hadn't played that and instead you had castled? Yes. So now d4 wouldn't hang. Yep. And you could just carry on with h5. Yeah. How stellar that would be. Now, was there a reason why you refrained from d5 here? And I'm not saying that it's necessarily the best move, but it's super duper logical. It does look good, doesn't it? What did I play again? Doesn't really matter, does it? You didn't do it. Yeah. Because, logic, again, you are attacking on the wing, so mm. to keep the, the center closed makes perfect sense. You're right. Because the golden rule is that against wing attack, seek counterplay in the center. But good luck for them with seeking counterplay in the center after this. And my bishop on d3 is going to be stuck behind my e4 pawn, no matter if I push or not. So Yes, that is correct. Having said that, if you don't push, then this bishop could actually come to life on this diagonal. Mm. Once again, another reason why we shouldn't have gone there, but don't want yep. to repeat the same thing all the time, but yeah, d5 here would have been yeah, yeah far more to sense. my liking. Okay, take, 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 take here. Yep. Very good. Rook e8. I'm lost for words. Actually, okay, he was concerned about bishop h6 and now he can drop back, but his position is so bad that he doesn't yep. have time for this anymore. h5, bishop here. Now I have to ask you, Dominic, here, although I did like what you did. Yep. I think h takes was really good, but did you actually see this move? Because I'm going like, really? Bishop oh, G4, when you when you actually like to play F3 in this structure yourself. Like, I, I missed it, I thought... How does yeah, this make sense? I, I mean, once again, what you did is, yeah. is perfectly fine and it makes a lot of sense tactically. But it's yeah. just like, dude, what is your story, Bishop G4? Like, yeah. why didn't this structure plays F3 voluntarily? to support g4 and to prevent knight g4s and whatnot, and now he's forcing you to play it. You're right. I, I didn't see that bishop h5 is met by g4. Yes, which is the part that troubles me, Dominic. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you see a bishop here, it's already half dead without even seeing the tactics, but then you look at it and you just go like, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, damn, that's, that, yeah, the, that's these are the bits, Dominic, that we are missing now on almost every single game. There is a little tactics like this that just goes by you without you even noticing thinking it. about it. Yeah. So well, that's sad. That, uh, 
the, the line that I looked at is actually more complicated than this. So it's weird. Oh, look, if you are looking for a clear-cut win, go no yeah. further. But yeah. the reason why it got more complicated than it should have is because you also made a very poor decision here. Yeah. You have got three takes. Which one do you think is the correct take, Dominic? The F point. I looked at it afterwards, the F point. Of course, but that's why I'm telling you, by the way, that you shouldn't be checking your computer with the, checking your games with the computer because yep. I want you to work it out because you looking it up with Stockfish telling you you should have taken here is not going to teach you a lot. Yep. Yep. You should have noticed that this is the one to take because that one is going to leave this hanging and this king is exposed. Mm. This king is not exposed, it's hidden. It's hidden. It's, protected it's beautifully the well hidden. It's safer than it yep. was now. Yep. Far safer. But after takes, takes, queen takes, it's essentially a resignable position because you're coming in from here and from here. Yep. And it should be striking obvious to you too because I can't possibly fathom w what you thought about how it would make me after this. Because yeah. it's almost like impossible. Like literally, yep. I don't see how you can crack it up. And not that I want to sound full of myself, but if I don't see it, I really do wonder how you do. <laughs> like I know it sounds really fully cockish and whatnot, but... That's no, true. It's just accurate. Yeah. So what, uh, what I'm, I'm not getting here, Dominic, is that what was your thinking? Like I take on H7 and then... How did this sentence finish in your head? I just thought that I had uh, some kind of possibilities with trading the, his black bishop, and then... I'm all up for that, so okay, bishop here, bishop takes, queen takes, I play queen d6. Yeah, and it's... there's not enough there, is there? It's not yeah. that there is not enough, that there is nothing there, because unless you give me a mate in one on f6, even if you have ten moves in a row now, you don't have a realistic plan to mm. exploit the weakness of my king because it's all about control of the dark squares and sadly that bishop is gone. Yeah, yep. So this is always a scenario that you want to avoid as possible, as much as possible, because it's very difficult to crack. I had a really quick kill there with two times, didn't I? Like, yeah, like yeah. here G takes F7 is just, uh, well, first of all, F3 was resigns and here GF7 is resigns. No exaggeration. Yeah, no, I know. It's it's pretty clear that it's dominating totally. Yeah, it's it's over, and now it's uh, going to be uh, again. You start from scratch, and to be honest with you, I think this yeah. is really bad. Okay. Because this is a horrendous bishop, and this is a very good bishop, and by now, I know it's very difficult, and this is a major mindset shift. You yeah. had to, you needed to accept the fact that yep. it was not going to be made. Like this yep. is chasing a dream that is long gone. It's gone, it's gone, yeah. It's a gonna, ain't gonna happen. And so now you need to realistically just calm down again, mm -hmm. cool the jets, and you realize that this is horrid. I'm not going to swap it off for this. This knight is horrid. My favorite move here would be G3. Really? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, because well, what does he want to do? He wants to play knight f4, even at the cost of a pawn. Any day of the week I would go in there, because after bishop takes pawn takes, look at that bishop. Uh, absolutely 100%. G3 makes this knight look like a donkey. Uh, you have uh, to really, this is Dominic the point, where a very aggressive attacking game turns into a quiet positional maneuvering. My first move is g3. My next move is to put the queen here because you identify that the white squares are very weak. Mm. Partly owing to the fact that their white square bishop is gone. So yep. now I'm just going to play a few lemon moves for black to, so that you see the strategy yep. where I am headed with all this. Yep. And the next part of my strategy is this. And you find that I put almost every single piece that I have on the best possible square. 
Very nice. The only part of that plan that I kind of had in my mind was to get the bishop out of the way so that I could put my knight on e3. Because I saw that the knight going forwards like that would be great. But, and look yeah. at how utterly useless these two are. Granted, I played 75 ridiculously stupid moves for black to show the strategy. But yep. this is how I operate. Yep. And you have to accept the fact that, um, yeah, the attack is gone. Mm. And we need to exploit now the positional pluses we have. Because the position is still far better for you, but yeah. from here on, you totally misplayed it. Like, this is really bad. Mm. And, um, okay, this is good. This is headed to the right square. I still would have loved to see a timely G3 to stop this ASAP. Yeah, yeah. Like, right now, because now it's actually threatening. Yeah. And golly gosh, oh my god, I didn't even remember this. Like, this move is just a disaster. Like, you're still attacking like there was anything to attack there. Mm. Like, that is so long gone. Mm. And this move again, Dominic tells me that uh, you were not thinking with a clear head. Because what did you expect he black to do? Because literally, any move that they do that is not knight f4 loses on the spot. Yep. So, this move says that I think you're an idiot. You're not going to play knight f4. Because mm. if you realistically reckon with knight f4, you realize what a disaster of position you got yourself into. Yeah. And w and this would never ever occur or would be a problem for you if you had kept this on g2. Or mm. had gone to g3. But let's say for the argument's sake that you still want this attack to work. Then why don't we play something like this? Which is by a million miles your worst piece has been for the last 10 moves yep. and now you can put it on the best diagonal ever whereas this is a strikingly odd move because you know it's coming and actually you just paved the way for an auto loss here for yourself mm. these are the impulsive moves Dominic that you tend to make a lot these days that you make under the premise of I'm being aggressive yep. But I do hope that at the bottom of your heart, you know that you are not. Okay. Because once again, you must have known that Knight F4 was coming. I did. So, and then you see the Queen Swap coming, which means that, hang on, I'm not being aggressive here at all. Yeah. I'm just making impulsive moves, but that, that's not to be mistaken. By Bishop C4 is incomparably more aggressive than G4. Yeah, I see that. So this is something, and likewise in the previous game where you went for c4 in the isolated pawn structure, mm. that was a bit uh, ill-conceived too in the premise of I'm um, being active. Okay. Yeah, Let's move on. I don't understand why anyone would ever swap this knight for this bishop. Wasn't rook g6 almost winning on the spot? Okay, I'm, yeah, okay, let's move on. Um, this is uh, a bit uh, confusing. Oh, G7. Wow. That is a move that wouldn't have occurred to me here, but okay. Makes sense, after all, it takes the pawn. Hmm. Wow, this is interesting. Hmm. Okay, takes, take, uh, isn't this hanging with check, or... I could have taken knight, and then... Well, to be perfectly honest, Dominic, I think you're dead lost anyway. Lost. Yeah, so, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. You, uh, and... <laughs> 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 oh, God! You, you got to love this dude. King yeah. G7. I mean, yeah. this mate is just... Stunningly beautiful. So, yeah, nice. for all the junky moves that were played Dominic in this game, yeah. they were well worth it. Because nothing like <laughs> learning from a game that you played really badly and you won it. Yeah, still, still won. <laughs> and especially with a superb checkmate. I mean, man, mm. I have been playing chess for almost 25 years now and never ever had the beauty to, to deliver this mate. <laughs> 
that was worth for you picking up the chess pieces at the age of six or whenever you did that, Dominic, just to, to finish off this game. For the record, after King G8, I think we are dead lost, but uh, I don't want to ruin the party <laughs> with that comment now. <laughs> oh, you got to love these guys. Oh my god, this, this is just... Yeah, this is good. Okay, some good quality stuff here. I don't think I have anything to say about this game other than well done. I did have a look at this morning. Yep, it was a whitewash. And uh, I certainly do have something to say about this. Uh, this game was a bit fishy, yeah. Yep. Explain to me this, please. I thought that uh, he'd already just developed his bishop to e2, and so making his bishop move again now is just forcing him to move the same piece in the opening. Right. Um, okay, so that was all the ups. Any downs? Yeah, loss of the center. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty big loss. It's a pretty big loss for his bishop to go to a better square. And whilst I do like the argument of making his bishop move twice, I would like to gently point out to you that he has got more pieces out than you do. Mm. And so arguing that he's losing time on his development is a very shaky argument. Um, the reason, Dominic, why... Here we do take on c4 is among many other reasons is because we don't have a better move. Okay. Like it's not actually possible to develop the bishop that we so badly would like to do here because of the well-known tactics of queen b3 hitting here and here. Yep. And so we must take it in order to be able to get out there. Now, once we are out there without having to take on c4, there's no way on earth I'm ever going to do that. Interesting. Okay. Why would I? I mean, I play knight d7, castles, bishop d6. Look at this beauty. Yep. Such purposefully, beautifully orchestrated development. Man, it's picture perfect. Mm. They have got a junky bishop. The bishop on e2 is doing bugger all. And they don't yep. even have a plan. I have a plan of castling, playing knight e4, queen f6, queen across, checkmate. If I so desire, I can play for e5. I can do anything I please. Yeah, that makes complete sense. And after d takes c4, bishop c4, <coughs> your whole entire game is going to be now a constant battle about fending off e4. And whether you will succeed but in that or not, I don't know. It really was about that. Because yeah, after I played bishop d6, yes, that's immediately a threat. Yeah, mind you, we hardly ever play bishop b d6 in this structure in the normal slav because you put the bishop here in order to pin the knight and occasionally threatening to eliminate it so the d4 is not on. But him having not played a4 like they, we always force yes, them to do in the main line, bishop yes. b4 becomes a bit problematic too and consequently you should have put it here. Uh, yeah. Because you just stepped really hardcore into that. Yep. But actually, bishop b4 is tolerable even here. Mind you, I really dislike this swap. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do it either, but even this is, looks remotely respectable. Okay. Because you do have some plans with c5, knight e4, blah. Mm. But bishop d6, man. Okay, so now, why don't we play this? Isn't this the only sensible way to swap, stop this whole nonsense? I thought that my move was also alright because it pinned the knight to the queen as well. Okay. Uh, is e4 threatening? It is right now. Okay. Is bishop g4 stopping e4? Mm, it's it, only, it stops the main punch of losing a piece to it, but no, it doesn't stop it. Thank you. Bishop g4 yeah. is out of the question. That That's it. Okay. And this is exactly how it should have gone through your head too. I mean, let's face it, Dominic, and uh, I did say this to you probably a couple of times, that you should look at every pair of moves that you play on the board as an yep. exchange of punches or a, a, a mini-match right. per se, okay? So they played rookie one, they basically screaming at your face, I want to play e4. You go like, yep. mm, okay, I play bishop g4. Who do you think won the battle? Or the mini-match between these two moves? Yeah, he did. Clearly. He said, I want to play e4. You said, okay, whatever. I did look at um, knight to e4 quite a bit. It is totally the only sensible move, to my mind, that you could have made here. 
I didn't like it. As... How about if he plays knight h4 here? Uh, let's pretend I didn't hear that. I will let you work out, Dominic, the problem with knight h4. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the only sensible move that they can do here, or the only sensible plan I can see, is takes, takes, and knight d2. Which, again, is fighting for the e4 square, but you see how now ugly moves had to be made in order to execute this. Like, yep. this is not an appealing picture, and now you can actually counter-strike in the center. Mm. This looks to me like a chess position, as far as black's position is concerned. Everything yep. makes sense, and everything is set up for purposes. And that same applies to here playing knight e4. Bishop g4 to me is sort of trying to be smart, but not really. Because mm, I still play e4. Yeah, I mean, I'm really lost for why he didn't. Granted, he still could. you can still play e5 here. Mm. But, um, yeah, my preference would have been heavily with the other one. I mean, this yep. move, oh my lord. Yeah, he's just gone passive. He's gone way too passive here. I, I think I would... Often people who play passive moves, if I call this passive, it's just ridiculous. Okay, uh, castles a3, I'm lost for words. Um, queen c7, b4, whatever. Um, where are we going with this, Dominic? I was actually thinking about playing a6, and I thought you'd kill me if I played a6. Yes, so. you are right. I was about to kill you right there just for saying it. So, um, yep. I was I was actually worried a little bit about uh, b5. Okay, I have no idea why you are worried about b5, but we are going to, to get to that. Yeah, because and I thought I don't need to be worried because the worst that comes to it, they take my c pawn and I just take back with the queen, so it's it's fine. So then I looked at a move that I I was thinking that in the end I would I would get a break on e5. Okay, by in the end you mean your plan is to play e5. Yep. Okay, so we are still, Dominic, struggling very badly with this planning versus actual moves we play. Okay. Your plan is e5, is that correct? Yep. Why the heck don't you play it then? For the life of me, I can't possibly comprehend how this has anything to do with e5. It doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. And yes, I do understand that 10 million moves down the line, there will be an open file. Yep. But it's totally irrelevant. And he's going to move his queen away. Mm. And now your rook on d8 is uh, not really a productive part of this plan. If your plan is to play e5, then I can't possibly fathom why would you look at any other moves than e5. Especially because now it works out beautifully tactically. Because now after bishop e5, they can't take the free piece because when you take here, they are both hanging. Ah, uh, okay. Please yes. note, the same yeah. concept would totally miserably fail with the insertion of these two moves because now the queen is guarding the knight. E.g., yeah. this move was a zillion times more sensible or useful for white than your rook d8 as far as the e5 plan was concerned. Mm. So once again, pieces out, form a plan, stick with it. Yeah. This is a typical move where you go like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to play something that looks like a developing move, sort of, kind of, and we'll go from there. Also, okay. your b5 comment. Mm. Okay, let's assume they do play b5. There is no way you would allow them to take this. Because uh, whatever you take back with, it's going to turn out to be far worse for you. If you take with the queen, then... Uh, yeah, knight b5, bishop out, rook c1 gives them a very splendid play on the b file. If you yep. take back with the pawn, it's a disaster. But I don't get why you wouldn't push it through and challenge the center. Like, this is a positively bad move here to play because of c5. And that's even irrespective of the fact that the rook is on the d file now. Yeah. Like, why is it not a super good position for you now? This pawn is such a lemon here. Like, it takes away all the good squares from their own pieces. I didn't see c5 at all. I wonder how that's possible. Because mm -hmm. in the first place, b4 was not born in the plan of b5. They played it because they wanted to develop the bishop here. Yep. But once again, the whole concept is that you are done with development time to 
act. Mm -hmm. And uh, if plan is e5, then e5 should be played. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I'm... Um, Okay, I do understand where you're going with this, but once again, I would have preferred e5. And see, you are being very inconsistent. Yeah. You said you wanted to play e5. Well, then, why don't you? It didn't look so good when his bishop was on b2. That was the reason. I, th I didn't want to open it up after he, you know, after he's put his bishop. Okay, on. so I would like to argue that. So what did they do now? Right, it actually looks good for me. Of course it does. I mean, they, what else could you do, Dominic, other than playing e5 here? The longer you sit here, the worse it gets. Mm. The structure is very clear. You can't break up with c5. You must, must break up with e5. All yep. your pieces are perfectly located for an e5 yep. breakout. You're covering it with a zillion pieces. You're already on the open file and you are hitting the piece that is covering it. Yeah, my pieces are in a good position. It's a picture-perfect setup for e5. Yeah, yeah. And I don't care about this bishop or whatever is good for them. It's irrelevant. Uh, it, you can't possibly play for anything else, so you go for this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, see that we are just making random moves now, like you had to, actually, because now b5 was pending. Yeah. And yeah. your e5 break, the longer delayed, the worse it will be. The harder it gets, yeah. Well, you can still get out because you are dominating the square. But now, for example, I can actually uh, take this bishop. Mm. Which I could have yep. never done before. For yep. just one example of the many things that he can potentially throw at you now. Oh, he actually did do that. Okay, e5 yeah. takes, takes. I don't like that move. I would have now take knight takes queen b3. Okay. This is a sensible plan. And why... In the long run stands better because of the two bishops but currently your pieces are rather active mm -hmm. knight a4 is rather lemony and to be honest uh, i would seriously consider here some sort of central change okay i would consider e4 actually i wish these two dudes were the other way around because <laughs> mm. after b uh, e4 knight Knight in knight in basically are playing a reverse French mm -hmm. where you manage to swap off your wide squared bishop, which is your crappy bishop, and there's a still at home. So if you get to do this blockade, names of which my system, uh, you are going to stand far better because it's a very knight. planless position for white. Sorry, if I here we just take my knight, wouldn't he? Knight b6. Um, uh, well. I'm saying this is the plan I assumed when they played knight a4 uh, yeah. that they wanted to jump in here. Oh, okay. Hence yeah. my proposal. Mind you. Yeah. Okay, that, Okay. so if uh, knight b6, knight takes, knight takes, and then pawn b5, that hurts you a bit. Yeah. So alternatively, of course, if they don't come in, I mean, yeah, if they hold the knight on a4, then you jump in with this knight to d5 and you go with the other one to f6. Hmm. I was and, thinking about that. And this bit. is a very good looking position. Okay, rook e8, knight c5, takes on d4, sensible. Um, oh man, this was something that I, yeah, I really wanted to you to do and you didn't. So in this position, there's a, pretty much a forced win for you or something that I would not hesitate to play for a second. Because it just strikes me as so obvious and for some reason it didn't materialize in the game at all. You played knight e5, which is a okay, but I think you have got an almost force win here. Oh, really? Yeah. And when I went through the game, I went like, yep, yeah, that's a no-brainer. And especially if you compare it to the move you made, which really is a timid move compared to what you could have done here. Is it bishop takes bishop? Um, continue, please. Pawn takes bishop. Mm -hmm. Queen to maybe f4. Replace that with an even better move.
Mm, I can't see it. Yes, you can. Keep thinking. Bishop takes bishop. Pawn takes bishop. What's the purpose of queen f4? To gang up on the pawn and put the his queen in a pin? Yeah, forget the queen and a pin. Um, yeah, okay, okay. So bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, rook to e4. Right. What do they do, Domino? Something like uh, rook cd1. Okay. What will we do? Name the first move that comes to your head in the position, the first two. No, we're still looking at queen to f4. Yeah, that should be your second choice. What is the number one instead? Uh, I still don't see it. Keep looking. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, rook to e4. C1, a D1. By the way, by the time you get here in your calculation, you already know that you are on the right track. Like nothing can be as good as this. Um, and I'm looking at uh, rook on the eighth file to D8. You mean rook, yeah. rook on D8 to E8? Yeah. Okay. Continue, please. And now he's got to protect his bishop. Yep. Maybe, yeah, it's looking pretty passive for him. Oh. Maybe rook d2. Yep, all right, let's continue. And now I can play, uh, still looking at queen f4. Why wouldn't you? Of course you are. It's getting enough a lot, yeah, yeah. I will be honest with you, Dominic. I calculated it this far when I concluded that this is game over. Okay. And um, I am sort of curious why you didn't do the exact same thinking that you did to me here because you pointed out the exact moves how this game should have and could have gone. This is collapsing here. They must go here. And at this rate, I'm not sure if this is best because knight d5 is super dirty too with coming in here and here. Yeah. But it's super logical. I mean, let, look at this pin. Like, how will I ever get out of this? Okay, rook d2 was a complete lemon. They need to play queen c4 here because rook d2 just uh, increases the pin on uh, e1 yep. and that they can never get out of it. But even here, yep. after something like knight d5, they can't move a piece. Mm. It's just dead lost. Yeah. It's yep. horrid. Mm. I was looking at king f1, trying to cover up the rook, and then... Oh god, this is how winning it is, Dominic. Like, they can't possibly make a legit move here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I've... Okay, I want you to figure out what the best move is in this position after g3. Because chess is beautiful sometimes. Always. So this is your puzzle now. Um, I'm looking at knight f4, g takes f. This king's just so open. Uh, I would like to ask you to look at a better version of this from move one. Okay. Ah, now I'm looking at knight to e3. Yep. F takes e. Mm -hmm. Queen takes g3 check. Mm -hmm. That's how far I calculated Dominic when I concluded that the game was over, but I can't yeah. take, can't accept that from you. Okay. So, and I don't think you feel 100% confident in that point that you are winning, but I may be wrong. Okay, so after queen takes uh, g3, then king, I don't know, uh, h1. Yeah. Queen takes h3 check. Yep. King back to g1. Yep. Rook to 
Oh, hang on. Uh, rook to h4. Yeah, continue, please. And I've got a mate threat on h1, queen h1, so I'm looking at... I'm not seeing how that's a mate, so elaborate, please. You're right, he's got king to f2. Um... I might have a better move than rook h4. Go for it then. Okay, hang on. I'm going to start again. Knight e3, f takes e. Queen g3, check. King h1, king h3, check. King g1. I mean, I can picture that position in my head and it looks completely winning. I just can't see a forced mate. Then tell me how you would play it. I'm glad that you concluded it to be completely winning because it is. Mm. But it's not good enough for me now. Yeah. It's a calculable position, so I want you to calculate it further. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try. Uh, okay, so after he's gone king back to g1, yeah. I'm gonna do rook takes e3. Yeah. And have you got a threat? With rook e3. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, I've got a threat of rook g3 check followed by queen h2. You mean queen g2, mate? Yep, yeah, good. Ah, yep, that works too. Yep. No, that works only because queen h2 is yep. not made, queen g2 is. Yep. Yep, yeah. alright. Uh, good enough. So that was the idea, knight e3, pawn takes and queen takes and then, to be honest with you, to me it's no brainer that it's check again because king here is made and after king here I would have played like this because now I don't see how they stop my mate thread down here, that's what I was hoping to hear. Yep, okay. Because even if bishop goes here then check here and that's a spectacular mate. But yep. uh, what you did was good enough. So all this comes, Dominic, from one move, and that is bishop takes d4 here. Knight d5 is a totally irrelevant move in the grand scheme of what's going on in this game right now. It's basically a very poorly coordinated army that is not ready to defend weaknesses, or when it finally gets its act together to actually defend the weaknesses, it collapses on this beautiful pin. Mm. And you should see these things, provided that you have enough time for it. Because compare that to this. Mm. It just makes you sad, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, uh, if, if you think about all these cool things that you could have done in this game that I showed you in that line, which was 100% realistic, after playing 95, you go like, oh my god. How mm. could I do that to myself? Yeah. Because really, you are, and look at these moves, Dominic, like, really? Yeah. Like, if you have a choice of playing this, or just stand up from the board and, I don't know, go out for a break, play five minutes with your daughters, daughter, <laughs> choose that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I think that you feel embarrassed when you see this. Uh, yeah. Like, what the heck, were, were you short on time, or what's happening here? I was short of a plan, actually. Yeah, but do you have a better plan now? 
I just thought at least it gives me a little bit more time to think of it next time. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I, I tell this a lot to my students, Dominic, that I would prefer you lose on time here. Okay. And I mean it 100%. Right. I honestly do mean it. You might have noticed that I have cut down on these, these types of moves. Like I do notice this, it, but uh, it doesn't stop me from legs. being the nasty, uh, annoying <laughs> douchebag of giving you all the more grief for it. Yep, because yep, my yep. objective is to weed it out of your game a hundred percent. It's almost gone. <laughs> and uh, yes, I know. So you feel like stuff you for giving me grief for it when it's nearly done. No, I am going to haunt you every <laughs> single time you do this <laughs> okay, because okay. the ninety eight point seven percent is not gonna cut it for me. Because it. it is just as obvious and striking to me as it is to you that this is a waste of space. I, I just just. To let you know why I played that one? I totally know why you did it. You know, okay, right. I know why you did it. You were short of plan, short of time. Let's figure it out in their time. There, there was there was another one other reason was was that um I wanted to develop my queen. I was thinking like bishop takes bishop, queen f four, and I didn't want him to be able to take my a pawn and then take you know, just start taking my pawns off to it. Right. It's not. It's not a good plan. Okay, I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. No, no. I, I, I will stop giving you the grief for it because I have given enough. Okay. So let let's move on. It happened. Yeah, I bury my case now. It's yeah. uh, all good. We got there, except. <laughs> Golly gosh. He was short on time. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's just forget about the last fifty seconds of our conversation because what I really want you to remember from this whole thing is yeah. this like yeah. this is how see this is dominic what i call uh, mm. active and aggressive and attacking chess yeah. opposed to that g4 move that you played in that game as a white where you just totally gave up the square so you really need to be able to distinguish between being impulsive but not necessarily doing damage whereas mm. is actually putting all your pieces hardcore in their face yeah and the other thing is, and I'm sorry, I, I really am, I apologize in, in advance, but you see, Dominic, that if you do play out the correct moves, Daddy, then even when, even when you know that Queen F4 is part of a plan, and, you do, uh, and uh, even though you know that it leaves A7 unguarded, if you play the correct moves, it's never yeah. going to come to this point. Mm. Because mm. it's just... An inner logic of chess that when you are playing so beautifully, these pawns are not going to be playing roles. See, they already had to play queen c4 because everything else would have been ten times worse. Mm, and so yeah. all of a sudden, queen f4 is free to go. Not, I still prefer knight b5 because it creates a beautiful threat of here and occasionally c3 and the e3 one as well. Yes. So that's that and i i do give credit for the fact dominic so please don't take it the bad way that you don't tend to do this as much as you used to but you still understand where i'm coming from i of course, of course. i don't get me wrong it doesn't give me pleasure to give you grief i know it looks like that <laughs> but i far prefer uh, to actually compliment your play when it's going well yep. uh, although i tend to do that fairly not not as uh, obviously as the grief giving I, I have to admit that i'm guilty of that okay. well, that helps me it helps me get stronger so um well um, look at that man yeah 2090 uh, and i don't know that you have been uh, above 2100 before but what i want you to do and remember i did say that is that i want it when you crack it i don't want you to go back anymore meaning mm. that yep. achieve it when you are there Yep. And I'm not indicating that you were not necessarily 2100 strength when you did it before, but I want it to be a sturdy, strong and steady improvement, which it appears to be. Yeah, I want it to stay up there as well. So, yeah. Okay. Um, mm. That's it. You, yeah, you've, you've given me a lot of things to think about, so thank you. Well, that's good because I was about to give you some sort of summary of what we discussed today and where we should go with this and for a second I got stuck on in my own thoughts about what to highlight from today mm -hmm. uh, but your opening play and your middle game planning is still shaky Dominic in that uh, they don't seem to be consistent my eg e5 and then we play rook a d8 mm. so that's where you still need to dig your heels in a little bit I don't know your time management because I never see how much it has 
spend on these moves. Yeah. But I um, because I tend to be spending too much time and always being. Well, I feel like my opponents don't use their time. Like often I'll be like twenty moves into a game and they're still on fifteen minutes and I'm down to like six or seven. That That's should not awful. influence your thinking at all. I'm perfectly happy for you to use your time that way and totally disregard what they are doing. It's okay. Where I'm getting with this is Dominic, uh, that, and I did say that to another student of mine, is that it is okay to say that 15, 10 is not enough. Yeah. You are one of my very few online students, and I praise the Lords and you for that, who actually play over the board competitions. And you need to remember that our pre predominant aim is to make you a better over the board player. Over the board. Exactly. And over the board, you have far more time than this. So yeah. I don't mind you saying that I'm playing occasionally junky moves because I'm running out of time. Mm. And mm. consequently, I also do not mind. In fact, I'm encouraging you, but it's going to be difficult to achieve to play longer yeah. games. If you find 15, yeah. 10 too short, play 15, 15, yeah. play 15, 30, play 20, 10, whatever. Yeah. I know yeah. that the further you extend it, the harder it becomes to find dudes to play with you. Yeah. It's a tough juggle because I know that when you sit down knowing that you have an hour for chess and you yeah. post a challenge, it might take yeah. 10 minutes before someone accepts it. Yeah. So yeah. it's a toughie. I understand that. But if you yeah. think yeah. that your game is actually solidly improving, but the results are not coming yet because yeah. of the time shortage, adjust it. Okay, okay. Because once again, I'm not, I'm not gaining pleasure despite of all the looks and appearances of constantly giving you grief. And I do think that we are making steady progress, which makes me very happy. Yep. And so probably we would make even more progress if we slowed it up a bit. in your yeah. games anyway, if we gave you more time so that you could work out these positions because many times including many times including this game, I'm pretty sure that by the time we got here, it could have come down to time that you didn't manage to find this beautiful sequence of takes, takes and rookie four. Mm, mm. So I'm happy for you to adjust these things because I think it serves what we want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. I'll see if I can play some longer ones. Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Okay. And remember, Dominic, it's very important. I know I told you this, but I keep on repeating this because it's important. After each game, don't start analyzing your game with stockfish on. Yeah. If you want to do any kind of analysis, then the first thing you should do is to compare your game versus the opening files I sent you. I, I actually do do that. And how long do you recommend that I look at it without a computer before I turn the computer on? Is it about the same length as the game itself, or would you go less than that? No, no, no. Because if you roughly have a good idea about where things went pear-shaped, yeah. you just focus on the critical points. Okay. So... That's it. But look, I think that very often it's counterproductive to look at the game with the computer is what I'm saying because it's going to tell you that your move was trash and is that this move should have been played yep. and you go like, yeah, but I don't get why. Mm, mm, mm. And it's not because you are not a strong player. I myself find very often this to be the case and I actually have to play through a very long sequence of moves that I don't necessarily grasp in order to yep. eventually let it drop and go like, ah, gotcha. Mm. Yep. I mean, in some cases it's painfully obvious because you just blundered something or you didn't see a tactics that is quick yeah. and easy, but yep. other cases are not necessarily that clear cut. Yeah. 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 All right, Dominic, I must go now. I'm sorry. Um, Thank you. Thanks a yep. lot. I yep. hope that it was to your benefit and then I shall see you next weekend at the same time. Yep. Sounds good. Alrighty, I will see you then. Thank you. Okay, Bye. You.